they are here to see God's blessing on the union of Darren and Leanne and their lives together. So let us now begin the service with a prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, God of love, we give you thanks for the love between Darren and Leanne. We ask for your presence and blessing now in our service today. May, may your Holy Spirit give deep meaning and purpose to the vows spoken here today. And this we ask in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Darren and Leanne have chosen the hymns for our service. My guess is Leanne has chosen the hymns. <laughs> so we're going to sing the first hymn. Now, uh, one of the great old hymns of the church that remind us that God is great in His faithfulness. So join in, those of you who be able to sing with us. <laughs> Words from the Bible, and then 
onto the platform. From the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, writes this tremendous chapter about God's love, which we have to reflect in our lives. And now I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging symbol. If I have a gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries of all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I gain nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil or rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now, we see but a poor perfection, as in a mirror. Then, we shall see face to face. Now, I know in part. Then, I shall know fully even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. May God bless to us the reading of His Word. And if you have your hope at home, please do it. Let me invite the bride of party to come and join me upon the platform.
This is the marriage into which Sarah and Leanne are now about to enter. Therefore, if anyone can show any reason why they may not lawfully be married, he should say so now.
Mr. and Mrs. Bluegins. <laughs> and just bring some, some thoughts. Uh, let me read first, just two verses from the Bible. From Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 to 12. Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. People still get wedding gifts. Some of you got gifts for the hand and dad today. Uh, I think that there are three gifts that I want you to receive during the church from myself as the pastor on behalf of the church this afternoon. And uh, some of them are uh, kind of a bit funny. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Others are a little bit more serious. See what you think. Gift number one is that for many of your church family today, our services are free. <coughs> so Shirley's not charging anything for being on the desk. Graham's not charging anything for being on the organ. The ladies who put together that lovely display for the refreshments afterwards are not charging anything for their services. Myself as the pastor, not charging anything for this wedding because we want to bless you. We want to encourage you. And uh, I know that we'll probably thank everybody afterwards. But all your church family have freely given their time there so that you can have a good start to your married life together. We want you to know that we are here for you. Yeah. And we want you to know that not just today. You see, uh, a wedding is half a day. <laughs> Somebody didn't listen to them. <laughs> A wedding is not a day, but a marriage is for the rest of your life. Yes. And we are here you today, but I want, Leanne knows it already, that I want you to know it too, that this church is here for you if there are problems, if there are issues, if there are difficulties in life, not just in relationship, but in life, that we can help you with, we are here for you. And that's our gift to you, is to be a spiritual yes. family towards you. The second gift I want to give you, and this one is a, a little bit more silly, is a piece of rope. <laughs> because how can you tie the knot with a little bit of rope? <laughs> yes? How can you tie the knot with a little bit of rope? And it goes back actually to the ancient healthy traditions, which when the ancient cats were getting married, they would tie a cloth around the wrist of the man and the woman. And uh, then they would tie that cloth together, they would tie it in a knot, and they would dance together that they were now one couple. That's what it goes back to. Tie the knot, the symbol of, of marriage and commitment to each other. And in some churches, uh, the, the pastor or the priest will have a, a rope around his waist and he will lay down over the hands of the couple. And uh, the couple, uh, uh, some churches actually tied the knot over their hands together. I don't know if any of you have seen that in, in churches of different kinds. Yes. Tying the knot. And so I've got a bit of rope for a bit of fun. Because you can't tie the knot without a bit of rope. No. Are you going to tie the knot? I'm going to tie the knot. I'm going to tie the knot. Give me a moment. I'll get there. You see, this rope though is not to trap. Or the trip. It's not the beat or the bind, but it's to hold you together, which is what Christian marriage is a commitment that holds us together. And when you tie it out, some of you might not know it was a voice that. So when you tie it, you a simple reef knot, like this one. What you see is the two legs. Can you see the two legs? Yeah. The more life strains and pulls, the more they can get. Yeah, 
put it up on? Huh? Thank you. Very good. Thank you. So, fill it up. Do you keep a rope? Do you tie the knot? Okay. Oh, we helped you tie the knot. Uh, and actually, in that reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 12, it talks about four of three stands. And every good rope, if you examine them, is actually made up of three ropes in the triangle. If you kind of untwist that one, you'll see that there are three ropes that make up one rope. And when it says in the Bible, the wisdom of Solomon, here, one of the greatest people in the Bible, that a cord of three strands is not quickly broken, it's talking about a man and a woman whose lives are wandered around themselves, and the third is God. Ray, turn it off. It's always family, isn't it? All always close. So, the three strands a man, a woman, and God, and as their lives connect, it makes the strongest rope. The strongest rope. And the third gift I will give you is this Bible. How many Bibles have you got already in the end? About four. About four. <laughs> Let me tell you now, you won't go one like this one. No. You might have one that looks like this one, but you won't go one like this one. Because this is the Bible that we use in the seminary here today, and I've written on the inside cover. Oh, nice. Okay? To Darren and Leanne Perkins. Oh. On the occasion of your Christian marriage, at Gilgal Baptist Church Port Call, on Friday the 1st of September 2023, 12.30pm. May God greatly bless your lives together. Jesus said, as I have loved you, so you must love one another, John 13, 34. And the greatest example of what love really is, is seen in the love that God has for us that is revealed in Jesus and in the cross and resurrection. That love is about sacrifice. Love is about commitment. Love is not what you take, it's what you give. Love is about making the effort for the other person and not just for yourself. Love one another as Jesus loves us. And I'm excited to report on the Reverend Martin Gillard BDMA. And I want to present this to you as well. Your wedding Bible. Now, so when my wife and I buy something for the house, like a vacuum cleaner, or a cooker, or a washing machine, it comes with a manual. And they always say with a manual, the best results follow the maker's instructions. And for marriage of the life, for the best results, follow the maker's instructions. Oh, you can get by with them by ignoring the instructions. We try, don't we, with our washing machines and cookers and... But it works better if you follow the maker's instructions. Which is why I want to give you this Bible as a gift and a reminder of today. So you've already got three gifts. Very rarely I will talk about three months. <laughs> the gift of a family, church family, yeah, for you to care for you. Gift of a rope to remind you that you time not. And the call of three strands. And the presence of God. And the Bible. The makers. Instructions. Would you join me, as I said, pray? Almighty God of love and heavenly Father, you are the God of love and the God of life. And we come before you today to ask your blessing upon Darren and Leanne and their family. We thank you for the love that they have shared for many years, but also for that deeper commitment and for that opportunity for your blessing upon their love in this service today. We thank you for Rosie and Emily. 
We thank you, Lord, for this family. And we pray your Holy Spirit's presence. Not only in the service today, but in the lives and days ahead. Send your Holy Spirit. May the fruitfulness of the Holy Spirit be seen in the lives of Darren and Gian and their family. Let their love for each other mirror your love for us. All of this we ask in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. So we join together to sing the second hymn that we have as chosen for us for her wedding day. And it's a hymn actually that kind of mirrors that last gift. It talks about standing on the promises of God. And the promises of God are the promises and truths in God's word. And when we follow his instructions and sign on his promises and live by the way God advises us to, life is far better and if we go our own way. So let's rejoice and sing. Standing on the promises. <coughs>
we will be going up to the side of the hall that we are doing. And uh, those who get to the section can come back in, in the front a little later uh, to take your places at the table. Do request if you've got confetti or, or anything like that that you wait until they are outside. Uh, usually, if everybody does it at the same time outside, it's much more fun. And we're not picking it up inside the church. <laughs> so, yes. Or if it's made of rice and birds when you do it, enjoy it. So, it's lovely to have the hands on the shirt as well, and we acknowledge their presence this afternoon. So, now, would you all please stand?